Hey everybody, it's slightly drizzling outside, and you know what that means. That's right, it's time for another talking time lapse video with me, your good buddy Josh Davenport. As always, all the comics on rgbros.com and all the videos here on YouTube are brought to you by the fine folks over at Patreon, patreon.com slash Josh Davenport. That is Brandon, Dan, Vivian, Matt, Mike, and Tobias. Thank you all so much for your support. Uh, today we are doing the talking time lapse video for RG Bros Fashion Dragon. Uh, so this is a uh, semi audio 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 biographical. It's a biography that is uh, an audio book. Apparently, um, is that what they call those? Do they call uh, autobiographies that are read on Audible or something like that? They call them audio biographies. They should. If they don't, they better. I'm gonna. I'm going to propose that at the next meeting I have with him. Um, but no, it's uh, slightly autobiographical in nature. As uh, When I was a young lad, uh, my brothers and I played a ton of Double Dragon. Just all the time uh, playing that game. And uh, we uh, constantly played uh, Double Dragon, you know, not just on the system, but out in real life too. And what we did is because in the game, depending on what version you're playing, like in the arcade, we didn't play the arcade version that much. In the arcade, like if you play it, the guys have like metal boots and they got, uh, they still have like the vests, but they have shirts on underneath them and all that stuff. For some reason, on the NES version of Double Dragon, like these dudes just run around in nothing but a vest and like cut off jean shorts. And that's it. Shirtless, shoeless, walking through the city streets, strolling through the forest. Because apparently they're so badass, they don't need no shoes. They barely need pants or shirts. But we were just like, all you need is uh, be shirtless with a vest, right? And this was like, uh, you know, the uh, 80s and, and 90s uh, early times. Back then, just running around as a dude with your shirt off was just like a thing that you did, I guess. So we... Uh, would pull the front of our shirts up over our heads until the collar like popped around back behind your neck. And it's really constricting, but basically you just end up with like a ring of rolled fabric around uh, both your arms. And it's like, it's like wearing a cutoff shirt basically that exposes your chest and you look like a total goofus, but we were uh, young, dumb kids and we were like, Oh man, now we look like, Billy and Jimmy Lee, let's throw some spinning roundhouse kicks. And then all day long, uh, practicing those spinning roundhouses. But that was a thing, man. Back in the the 80s times of video games especially, like, it didn't matter what kind of mission the dudes were on in a game. It was just like, no shirts. You don't get shirts. Especially uh, with a game like Contra or something. I might have talked about this before. I don't think I have, but... I thought about it uh, quite a bit. It's like with Contra, you got dudes fighting off an alien invasion of the planet Earth. Now these days, you'd have somebody like Master Chief or somebody from you know Killzone or whatever who's wearing like tons of flak vests and freaking uh, you know body armor and super space Iron Man looking type stuff. Back in the eighties, they're like, what would a guy use to uh, to fight off some aliens with laser beams and just some. Uh, Let's put them in some sweatpants, no shirt. Not gonna need it. Only thing a shirt would do when you're fighting aliens is get in the way. You know, you don't want your shirt hanging up on something. Or clogging the uh <laughs> clogging the uh the ports on your machine gun. Lord knows you want to have that hot steel pressed to your flesh where you're uh spinning that ammo. But yeah, it was uh like, Double Dragon, no shirts. Contra, no shirts. Uh, I guess it was a little more understandable with games like, fighting games like Pit Fighter. Basically, every character in that game was just some dude with no shirt. Like that was just such a ridiculous game. Uh, let's see, I'm sure there's other ones. Like, I think Akari Warriors or something like that. I can't remember if those dudes had shirts, but I'm pretty sure even if they had shirts in the game, I think on the cover of the game, they didn't have shirts on. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe somebody needs to bring that back. The uh, 
ridiculously sh- shirtless uh, uh, protagonist just like flying out of airlocks into open space with no <laughs> with no shirt on and like maybe a small helmet just uh, insane stuff like that. But uh, speaking of Double Dragon, uh, like I mentioned in the post, Double Dragon 4 just came out. I have, still haven't had a chance to play it. I'm looking forward to trying it because it's, you know, modeled after the old NES uh, Double Dragon games. I'm super stoked about playing that a little bit. But I also, I really hope they make a sequel to Double Dragon Neon. And that came out on, I think, I can't remember if it was on the PS3. I think it was. And the Xbox. And that was like, if you ever wondered what it would be like if uh, the Lees from uh, Double Dragon went up against Skeletor. Basically, that's what that game is. And you, uh, it's got multiple replay values because you go back through and you like level up and uh, get different tapes with different moves on them and stuff like that. It's pretty freaking hilarious. So if you get a chance, find Double Dragon Neon and play it if you just like uh, old school beat-em-ups. That's like, if I was going to make a game uh, based on RG Bros, like, the first game I would make would be like a Final Fight style, uh, Double Dragon esque, like walking through city streets and really weird locations, just beat them up, because uh, those are always just fun. I mean, other things would be fun to try later, but the first thing I'd want to do is is one of those. So if anybody wants to back in uh, a uh, side scrolling beat 'em up featuring the characters of RG Bros, just uh, get in contact with me because I'm more than willing to get that project going. Let's see, we're deep, deep in the inks here. I don't know why, like, uh, Gilbert just pulls this uh, notepad out of nowhere and starts taking notes. But he's right. Like, in the first panel, he says that this doesn't pertain to him at all because he doesn't wear clothes. I mean, Baxter barely wears clothes. I guess they both wear about the same amount of clothes, honestly. Uh, Gilbert just has his collar, and Baxter wears his uh, his fanny pack every once in a while. But at least uh, Baxter like puts on a jacket when it gets cold. Gilbert doesn't even do that. I think one time I had him wear a uh, Christmas sweater in a comic where they were getting their picture made at like Sears or something like that. And that might be the only time he's ever been in any sort of clothing. And Reggie, even though he constantly, you know, he wears the same clothes all the time, there are many, he, he's got a guy who's shy about trying to get rid of those at any point. I think I've been drawing a lot of those little duck lips in the comic lately, but it's, it's another one of those things that's just really fun to do. Like, uh, I think before I mentioned, uh, like wall eyes was something I really enjoy putting on characters because it's always interesting and fun. And then uh, these little smoochy boo lips or whatever. They, I don't know if there's like a real term for them, but I like drawing those. I like to draw it. Meh. I can't remember whether I go back and put in Gilbert's tail in this or not. I know I round out his head a little more in the first panel. I think uh, closer to the end of this um, video here in a minute because I wasn't really digging the way. Like every once in a while when I'm drawing the curve of uh, Gilbert's head, which is kind of like a thumb shape, I taper it a little too much at the top. It gets a little too cone heady, pointy. And I think that happened in the first frame here. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I have my flaws. But, uh, yeah, I'm really in. Yeah, going through there, getting the getting that fanny pack colored in. Always going back to that uh, 2014. I'm going to update that and go to a different uh, comic than 2014. I'm going to find a sooner one. I also just need to find out how to do palettes. I'm sure there's a way to save like character palettes or something like this. Maybe that's something that's locked off for the EX version of Clip Studio Paint Pro or what on here is Manga Studio 5 still in this version. But I've been really needing to do that. Things that need to go on the list, on the docket, if you will. 
of things to do. Which is why I know why you guys uh, tune in to watch these videos. You want to see me sit here and listen to me talk about uh, what do I need to do today? Go to the store. I need to pick up some some wheat bran. It's very important to keep me regular. I need lots of fiber. Mm. Uh, oh, what else? So I gotta get some dishwashing detergent. Mm. That's what this is all about. It's just I'm just gonna make these videos me talking about mundane tasks that I'm doing around my house, uh, or discussing how often I have bowel movements or something during these videos. I'm keeping a schedule. You gotta color in. Gotta make sure you darken the nipples just a little bit on the old Regio, on old Reginald. I was wondering how much shadow to put in around the nose area there. Where it's just getting yanked up. Can strike that balance. Get some good shading going on to that that notepad. And I'm not sure I've been entirely consistent with how much hair Reggie has on his stomach and chest in the past. I need to go back and look at that at some point. Yeah, here I am trying to fix that weird pointiness. It's always a struggle with uh, with Gilbert. With Reggie and Baxter, it's not that big a deal. Like, I always know that Baxter's eyes, you know, start on his head and go up out. And Reggie's eyes are where human eyes are. Gilbert's eyes are positioned around his big old schnoz, which... Uh, sometimes makes it more difficult to do because half of one of his eyes is typically cut cut off at the bottom, number one. And two, it's just figuring out how far out is okay for one of his eyeballs to stick off of his face. Like, that was the problem with that first one. When you get the two, two pointy in the head going around, and sometimes one of those eyes looks like it's just uh, dangling from his skull. And unless I'm drawing a comic about eyeballs dangling out of skulls, uh, I don't want that look happening. Also, I don't think I go back uh, and put uh, Gilbert's tail in this at any point. So he must have just been letting it lay loose. I'm going to get all these word bubbles in just the right spot. Yeah, here I had this extra line about fishing a hairball out of the shower drain. I just eventually it was just like, yeah, it's not necessary. Once you say you're going to stick gross stuff in somebody's belly button, you don't necessarily need that last line. It's just always wondering where to cut it off. Not that I think it would like ruin the comic if I left that in there, but one, it required more room for the uh, word bubble, and two, it just felt like I was tacking it on just to tack it on. So I don't know. I don't know if it was necessary, totally necessary or not. Yup. That's a word I use uh, constantly in real life and in the comic. Yup. Yerp. Yarp. All of those mean yes. In my book. Hopefully, my book will be out sometime in the near future. Working on getting that going. For this, uh, this comic. This McQuamic and Schmick. Uh, those are the people who make those uh, seasonings. I do believe they make wonderful seasonings. Yep, I can't. Yeah, I gotta go back. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, move it around. So I don't know what video games do you remember playing where people are just ridiculous and shirtless uh, from way back in the day. Uh, let me know because I think back in the eighties. Not having a shirt and oiling up your chest was just like the apparently chest oil was supposed to uh, deflect bullets or something ridiculous. But yeah, let me know if you enjoy playing two uh, D side scrollers as much as I do. I want to I want to hear about what your favorites are, whether it's Double Dragon or Battle Toads or uh, Final Fight, any of those good good ones, or you know any of the the X Men or uh, Simpsons ones, all those old good Konami side scrollers. It looks like we're reaching the end here. So thank you all for sticking it out, hanging in with me. And I'll catch you on Thursday. Bye-bye.